Instructional design theories vary in specific details, but the essential instructional design process is always learner-centered and involves analyzing the content skills or a combination of content and skills to be taught within the context of the specific learners. Planning the instruction for specific learners. Creating or otherwise preparing instructional materials and delivery mechanisms and supporting tools for instruction. And finally, evaluating the instruction. Not just evaluating learner success, but whether the instruction itself succeeded. So, let's go through the seven-step process for instructional design for online learning. Step one, needs assessment and instructional goals. What does the student or training participant need to know or do? What are their motivations? What will be your broad goals for instruction? Step two, instructional analysis, also known as learning task analysis. Here you need information about the essential prerequisites, for example. What needs to be taught and what resources will you need? Step three, entry behavior and learner characteristics. You'll need to know where your learners are now. Step four, learning outcomes and motivating learners. What will the learner accomplish? Learning outcomes and indicators need to be specific and measurable. Step five, pre-instructional activities and planning instructional strategies. And this will include planning for learner participation, testing, assessment, and evaluation of learner outcomes. Also follow through activities related to motivation and marketing. Step six, planning instructional materials, also known as learning objects. Step seven, formative and summative evaluation. We call it formative because you're gathering this information throughout the process of instruction and it'll help you improve your own instruction and ultimately facilitate better learning. Good instructional design plans facilitate designing effective instruction that meets the needs of an identified group of learners. The instructional design process can be more or less complicated and include other factors that the teachers, managers, or instructional designers think are important. Formal instructional design is analogous to how computer programmers work. New programmers begin by using flowcharts to guide the coding of algorithms. And then as they become more facile with their work, they leave out the flowcharts and do the algorithm organization in their heads as they code. Real programmers in real organizations must learn to document their coding in any case so that they can share what they've done with other programmers and members of the organization who need to be able to understand, edit, and improve on their work. In the web-based instruction environment, as trainers, we're not yet facile. A formal instructional design process is necessary to get properly started with instructional design. And if that's not enough to convince you about the importance of instructional design, think about this. Many of us need to create a formal instructional design plan to apply for funding to support projects. Convince administrators and managers that the instruction is a good use of time and funding. And to more effectively work in a team environment where more than a single individual contributes to the project.